Board Rounds, session number 26. The moment you step foot on campus as a medical student, you are gearing up for one of the biggest tests you'll ever have to take, USMLE Step 1 or Comlex Level 1. The medical school headquarters and board vitals are going to help you prepare for your first board exam with questions, pearls of information, and guidance to make sure you have what it takes to score high and match into your specialty of choice. Now, welcome back to Board Rounds. If this is not your first time here, if this is your first time here, thank you for finding us, taking some time to hang out with us today. Now, I say us. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week, and I am joined by Dr. Karen Shackelford from Board Vitals. Today, we have a great question all about a 20-year-old menstruating female. Karen, back for some more board rounds with Board Vitals. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what we have today, to see if I remember some information. Last week, I, I got it right, I think. Um, trying to keep my streak alive, where at least one that mm-hmm. I that I know of. So, what's, no, you have a very good streak. <laughs> what What do we have in store today? All right, today we have a little microbiology, um, and the body systems are hematopoietic and the immune system. So, a twenty year old female patient presents during the fifth day of her menstrual period, complaining of abdominal pain, vomiting. She's had watery diarrhea and myalgia for 12 hours. On exam, her temperature is 103.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Her blood pressure is 80 over 60 millimeters of mercury, and her heart rate is 135 beats per minute. She is ill-appearing, somewhat somnolent. She has hyperemic conjunctiva and a generalized erythematous macular rash that involves her palms and soles. So which of the following best describes the cause of her illness? Ready? Four options. Option A is gram-negative diplococci. Option B is gram-negative obligate intracellular bacterium. Option C is gram-positive facultative anaerobic cocci. And option D is single positive stranded RNA virus. And your answer? <laughs> oh, um, so we have a female who is menstruating uh, and looks pretty sick, right? Uh, potentially, oh man, I was going to say potentially a little septic maybe with her BP in the tank and uh, fever mm. and high heart rate. Uh, going up. Um, and then those clinical signs, the erythematous conjunctiva. And what was going on with the palms and soles? Say that one again. Uh, she has a generalized uh, erythematous macular rash, and it involves both okay. palms and soles. Oh, um, you know, I don't know what's going on with this. So if I were a betting man, uh, and I'm not, but uh, I'll pretend I am, I would, um, oh man, the rash. You know what? I I don't know what's going on here. So I'm going to uh, either go A or B for some weird reason, and I'm going to uh, go with A just because I don't know any other reason to pick a gram negative diplococci. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's no, I think that's a reasonable guess. So, you know, it's C. She actually has toxic shock syndrome, and they didn't <sighs> actually come out and say in the question that she had an indwelling, you know, tampon. Yeah, you uh, know what? That's that's where I was. <laughs> like the thought process I wanted to go with, but because it didn't mention anything about uh, a tampon, I was like, well, they would at least hint towards that. They, they have to give you a little bit to, to get there. Well, I guess like I was looking at this and I thought, well, the menstrual period. I mean, I think there's a fine balance between giving the answer away and, um, you know, 
you know how that goes. <laughs> yep. But anyway, look, I'll go into the explanation. So highly absorbent tampons are the big risk factors. Mm-hmm. But I and I didn't realize this. Half of women who do develop toxic shock syndrome uh, during their menstrual period are not using tampons, actually. So that's Mm. something interesting. Um, Related to the menstrual period, however, toxic shock is usually the result of infection by staph aureus. And it releases, uh, of course, endotoxins, but it also, the uh, bacterium acts as a super antigen. So that's what triggers the syndrome. It triggers activation of T lymphocytes and they release massive amounts of cytokines. The uh, host immune response is limited in patients with toxic shock. And it looks as though some studies have shown that that population, the people who end up with toxic shock, failed, their thoughts to maybe fail to develop antibodies against the bacteria that usually develop in like up to 95% of the population in childhood. So. Interesting. Um, uh, I, I'm so still thrown right. off by the, uh, the lack of the tampon. That's very interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's not always, uh, absolutely not always necessary. And then you, you know, you think about things like nasal packing or wound packing, which are two other big causes, but, and, I believe when I actually looked this up, I believe it was up to date or I think maybe a journal article I read that that pointed out that it necessary you did not necessarily half of women who who developed this while menstruating didn't have um, an indwelling tampon. Mm. So, but anyway, the criteria for diagnosis basically fever, chills, hypotension, and then the dermatologic findings and evidence of body system, you know, multi-system organ involvement, at least three body systems. And that counts the skin. Okay. So in this patient's case, she had uh, her circulatory system. She had hyperemia of her mucous membranes, the maculopapular rash, which eventually desquamates after like one to two weeks. Um, she had the nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea in the GI system. Her mental status was altered. Some people have seizures or somnolence or encephalopathy um, that other organ involvement may include like intrinsic renal failure or pre-renal uh, renal failure. Myalgias are also um, sometimes result in elevated serum creatinine, phosphokinase, and he- hepatic dysfunction is not uncommon. The treatment, if there is a foreign body removal, debridement of any surgical room, wounds and rapid administration of appropriate antibiotics, which include vancomycin and clindomycin with the penicillin that has a beta lactamase inhibitor or a carbapenem instead. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, I would have thought perhaps meningococcal uh, meningitis, but then you would have thought they would have given you a clue about the stiff neck, right? Yeah. Rocky Mount spotted fever, you know, B was also a good thought. Um, I think, I really think the USMLE step one is going to give you pretty much the mo- clues to the most typical case. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, white, for example, with Rocky Mountain spotted fever, I think they would say, yeah, he was in whatever endemic area, but yep. they wouldn't necessarily say he was bit by a mosquito. So, yeah. Um, and uh, oh, the uh, dengue fever was the final one, the single positive stranded RNA virus. And we've talked about that one before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah. So interesting kind of thought process here for uh, for the way this question was written is is we're gonna kind of take you down that path of uh, toxic toxic shock syndrome with uh, what most uh, would would think about as a as a tampon. Um, but we're not actually going to say tampon. And just like you said, for like the Rocky Mountain spotted fever, we may say they came from a, um, a, a, a specific endemic area, but we're not going to say that they, they were eaten up by mosquitoes and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't think that's too unusual. A lot of times the USMLE will spell it out and certainly review banks often spell it out. But I think you have to be aware of, um, Keep your eye open for clues that, that don't just, for example, in the first question we had, I think there was a clue in, oh, positive monospot test, right? Yep. And 
you know, if you wanted to be a little more subtle, you could have just said throat culture is negative for strep and let the uh, user decide whether, you know, the monospot might be positive. <laughs> you yeah. said the monospot was bending. So there are, I, you know, I don't think anybody's trying to trick anybody. I think you get definitely enough information to answer the question, but some have to be a little bit harder than others. So. All right. So there you have it. Trick question. Not necessarily a trick question, but I just, I was like, they can't go, they can't go down the toxic shock route if they didn't tell us about a tampon. But uh, guess what? They can. So always try to remember that they're not going to hand feed you every single detail that you're like, oh yeah, I know what that is, right? It's always, it's never, they're not always going to be that easy. Uh, even though the answer choice isn't like, answer choice A, toxic shock syndrome. It'll be uh, something like, what's the cause, right? The, the actual pathogen in this case. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. If you are looking for some more board prep Go to boardvitals.com, check out their USMLA Step 1 question bank or their Comlex Level 1 question bank, depending on which practice set that you get uh, as far as three months, six months, one month. Uh, if you get to the three month or six month package, you get the ask a clinician, something where you can respond to a question and say, hey, like, I don't get this question. I don't get this answer. And you'll have one of the physicians from Board Vitals respond to you as well. Don't forget that uh, with the one month, three month and six month packages, every time you purchase a vaccine is donated as well. So great cause there to uh, help out in this world. Again, go to boardvitals.com. Use the promo code BOARDROUNDS to save 15% off. Again, boardvitals.com, promo code BOARDROUNDS. Have a great week. We'll see you next time here on Board Rounds. This is MedEd Media.